Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Stein and welcome to another episode of Unpacking Possibility, where hopefully you learn things that help you unpack your own possibility. So tonight I'm really excited to be here with you and I'd like to talk about something that most people can identify with and most people can kind of get and that's wanting to get things done. But a lot of times we get in our own heads and we get in our own way and um, we either stop before we start or we start making steps and for one reason or another um, we may not follow through on goals that might be important to us. And so I want to talk a little bit about um, how we can do that, how we can use some sim simple um, techniques and some, keep some simple things in mind to help us make progress toward our goals and, and feel really good about it. And, and do it in a way that it doesn't have to feel so um, labor intensive or tedious or something we just want to keep putting off, right? Because we all do that. Um, and I want you to think tonight about a goal that you would like to achieve. So take a moment right now and do that. And just let it pop in your mind. And it might even be something different from what um, you would think you would say. But it could be something pretty small and mundane, like um, you want to organize a room in your home. Um, or it might be something like learning a new skill, a new sport. Or achieving a financial goal, saving money or... Um, it could really be anything. A, a really popular one um, is always getting in shape. And we'll talk about why getting in shape in and of itself isn't the best way to frame that goal. But if you frame it well and, and have a plan, you actually will get in shape. And you can enjoy yourself along the way and feel really proud of yourself. So just see what goal comes to mind. And if you happen to have a pen and paper with you, of course you can um, jot that down and jot down some steps. But if not, just trust that you'll remember what you need to and you can always jot it down later. But um, the first technique or the first kind of approach that I wanna go over in terms of helping you achieve your goals and stop putting them off or stop getting discouraged halfway through is um, a really kind of logical, behavioral kind of um, tool. And then the second thing is going to be a little bit more kind of meditative. So you, want, you might want to be somewhere where you can just kind of relax when you listen to that part. Um, because it's going to be a little bit more of a self-hypnotic technique. So if you're driving, you'll want to turn the podcast off when we get to that so that you can be in a good space for the um, self-hypnosis um, and not driving. Um, but for now, you can absolutely be listening to this wherever you are um, and just allow your mind to take it in in whatever way is helpful for you. Okay, so the first tool that I want to talk about is um, using an acronym that's going to help you remember the essentials of achieving a goal. Um, and it's called SMART. So S-M-A-R-T, SMART goals. And I'm going to go over what that means and how you can take your goal and kind of use this um, strategy to start getting it done. So the S in SMART refers to specific. You want your goals to be specific. And I'm going to use an example. Um, a lot of people have the goal of, quote, getting in shape. And it's a great goal, but it's not terribly specific. So if you were to say, um, yeah, I really want to get in shape, you might, have an, an, you might have an idea in your mind of what that means, but it's harder to make concrete steps toward a goal that is nonspecific. So if your goal, your overall overarching large goal is to get in shape, think about what it is that means for you. Does that mean um, running farther or faster? Does that mean having greater endurance? Does that mean losing weight or gaining weight, becoming more flexible? 
doesn't mean um, building muscle. So when you picture yourself as someone who is in shape and feels really good about that, that's actually extremely important. Think about what changes would have to happen. And then when you know what those changes are, you want to have specific steps. So if you want to build muscle, you know that that's going to involve some sort of um, resistance training or weight training, whether you use your own body or you use weights. Um, But you're going to want to do something that helps you build stronger muscles. And that's a very different goal or a very different step toward your goal of getting in shape than um, wanting to swim for longer or a greater distance or build up um, greater cardiovascular um, endurance and so forth. So you get the idea. The, the next thing in SMART is the M and it's measurable. So you want your goal to be something you can measure. So for example, if you know that you want to get in shape and for you the first step for that would be building muscle you would want to probably either be able to tell um, what your um, percent muscle to body fat is and maybe that would mean one of those scales that helps tell you um, how many pounds of muscle you have right now right and you'd want to see that go up or maybe that would be um, lifting a certain amount of weight and maybe it's 10 pounds today and maybe in six weeks it's going to be 12 pounds or 15 pounds and so forth. Um, you want it to be achievable. So set a goal that's realistic to achieve in the near future. Now the mini goals obviously are building up to a larger goal and you can always set new mini goals but they should be things that kind of make sense. Um, being realistic, not pessimistic, but you know, if you can only do um, a bicep curl with five pounds now, it's not realistic to say that in next week you are going to be doing bicep curls with 20 pounds. So again, you get the idea. Um, it should be relevant. So it should be something that is relevant to your overarching goal, right? So everything we've just talked about, well, that makes sense towards, um, it's rel- they're relevant to getting in shape. And time bound. So you want to make each step, each mini goal that you set along the way to achieving your larger goal. You want to give yourself a certain amount of time to achieve these other things, these other steps. Um, because that's how you'll know you're successful. And as human beings, we're really wired to be looking for evidence of success. When we are successful, our brains really like that. And we keep doing it. We see evidence of success and we're motivated to keep going, even when things feel a little difficult or even when maybe we plateau a little bit, um, as we all do when we're learning something new or, or achieving something. There's always a little bit of um, variability in terms of our progress. But when goals are time bound, we get to a certain point, we know we've achieved them. If we haven't achieved them by um, say, you know, say we set a goal of again, in six weeks, we will go from lifting five pounds for biceps curls. And I know many of you are saying I can do way more than that and good for you. Um, But if your goal is to use 20 pound dumbbells by that time, and you're only at 12 pound dumbbells, you know that you want to just readjust your goals. And, um, you know, that's totally fine. Um, But you want to set goals that you check in and you know if you've achieved them. And if you've achieved them already, you can go on to the next level. So again, specific measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And the acronym is SMART. And so later on, you can write that down and, and kind of break one of your goals into, um, into those kind of categories and come up with a plan that you can check in with yourself or maybe have 
um, a friend or a partner check in with you and, and help you to stay motivated. Now, the other thing is, um, you know, the measurable, the M for measurable and smart could just has, could just have easily have been um, meaningful. And the meaningful part is so important because if we don't care about the goal, it's so much harder to make steps toward achieving it. You know, or if it's a goal that we don't really want to achieve, but we're doing it for someone else, it's just a lot harder. So when you set goals for yourself and you feel like, ah, you know, I I wanted to be able to do this and I've tried it three times or 30 times and I still haven't gotten there, ask yourself, what would it mean to you? And, And it's really worth looking to also at the the pluses and the minuses of achieving your goal. And you're going to say, well, if it's a goal that's that I'm setting, it's important enough for me to set, what could the minuses be? And what I'm going to say is going to sound a bit provocative, but even good things can have a downside for us. And often it's one that we're not um, consciously aware of. So I'm going to give you an example. So someone came to see me many years ago now for smoking cessation. And that's actually something um, that responds well to these um, behavioral approaches. It also responds well to hypnosis if the person is a good candidate for hypnosis, and this person was. But, you know, the thing was a part of him wanted very much to quit smoking and could easily identify the reasons why, the good reasons, the pluses for quitting smoking, being around um, for family members and to be able to, um, you know, dance at your kid's wedding or at your grandchild's wedding, being able to be productive and healthy, um, not smelling like smoke, not spending so much money on cigarettes. But another part of him had other reasons why he was not ready to quit smoking. And that's why he had tried and been successful briefly and then slid back into the habit many times even after quitting. And, you know, in that example, this person, um, among other things, felt undeserving of good health for a lot of reasons that I won't get into here. But um, you know, that's really important to know. Um, and if that's your go-to tool, like it was for this person, you can be really worried that if you are anxious, um, or if you are frustrated, if you give up that tool, in his case, smoking, that you won't be able to be okay if you don't have another tool. So that's where we get into the other part of goal setting. And you want to make sure that most of you is on board. It's okay if some part of you is like, "Ah, I don't know if I really want to do this. But you really want to pick something that's meaningful. I'm going to give you another example that's not even that um, that big a deal or significant. But like if if you are one of those people who buys a lot of books because you see all these books online and they seem really great, and then you have a gazillion books on your bookshelf, <laughs> you might have a goal of wanting to get through some of them because you've spent money on them and you feel like you, quote, should read them. And you might notice that there are some books that you pick up and you just don't ever finish them and you feel like you should, but it feels like a, an unpleasant job trying to get through them, right? So that would be some an example of where you just, you're just not super motivated. So you might not even want to adopt the SMART goals or any other kind of approach for getting through that book. It might just not be important to you and you might want to pick a different goal. And that's okay too. Sometimes we learn that, you know, something that we're trying to force ourselves to do just doesn't really feel like the right fit or doesn't feel like the right fit right now. So timing can be really important too. Now, with regard to connecting to a goal, let's just say it's a goal that even if part of you isn't on board, it's super important that you give it a try. Like, again, like the person I referred to before who 
really wanted to um, quit smoking because not quitting smoking put this person at risk of a bunch of health problems that were starting to creep up. So how do you connect to the part of you that wants to do this goal and all of the benefits? And I'm going to tell you how. And this is where the self-hypnosis comes in. So again, if you're driving, you might want to listen to the rest of this half later um, but because you might find that you get a little bit um, in the movie in your mind. Um, but if you're not driving and you're just somewhere kind of relaxing and listening, this is a great time to just let yourself go within. And, you know, it's not going to be formal hypnosis, but what you'll probably notice is that um, images that you're hearing me say generate images in your own mind and you might feel yourself just going within more and that's perfectly okay actually again if you're home and kind of chilling out um, if you imagine your timeline that timeline of your life and it's a timeline that is something you have some control over right it's hard to sometimes feel like that but Along the timeline, think of it like a road to different waypoints. And you kind of get to choose where those stops on your journey are, right? You kind of get to choose the route. And so if you imagine yourself on this journey and in this space where as you are walking along, you are able to kind of notice your surroundings and pick where you want to go and you can imagine yourself at this particular waypoint having achieved this goal you can imagine or see or sense maybe from the outside looking in you can see yourself feeling really good and really proud maybe noticing how you carry yourself or um just noticing how it feels to be in your body. Maybe the body that's achieved the goal of getting in shape in some way, or um, maybe it's the goal of learning a new skill or acquiring new knowledge, or maybe just learning to engage with the people in a way that feels better, whatever it is. But see yourself walking and carrying yourself the way you carry yourself when you feel really good about something and again it doesn't have to be a massive goal to be a meaningful one you know cleaning your kitchen can be an important goal that makes you feel really good when it's done and you can even imagine that all the waypoints along the way to that very significant one of achieving some sort of um, measurable and important goal that along the way you can actually be curious and open-minded and enjoy yourself and that might be something you hadn't thought about before because often we think of goals as being hard and and difficult and maybe even not as pleasant or enjoyable as we'd like and yet they can be if we allow ourselves to be in the moment you know just washing dishes when you're quiet or listening to music can be very meditative and might be time that you get to yourself that you don't normally get and there can be enjoyment and something as simple as simple as feeling warm water running over your hands and smelling the scent of the dish soap, right? So that would be a really simple goal. But maybe your goal is a little bit bigger or even more meaningful. Or maybe it, there are more steps on the way to your goal. But you can sense or imagine what it would feel like to be moving through each of those steps with ease. And again, maybe a little bit of unexpected curiosity or even delight because if it's let's say it's reading a book with each page turned you learn so much more 
And that can feel wonderful as your inner world expands. Or maybe it's running a mile or five miles or whatever it is, but being surprised and delighted at how your body can adapt. You're feeling stronger, more successful, feeling proud and knowing that it is not only okay, but really wonderful to allow yourself to feel pride in what you accomplish. Whether the goal is small or larger, it really doesn't matter because you're allowing yourself to accomplish something that means something to you. What a wonderful thing that is. So just allow your mind to travel forward in time to the time when you've already achieved this goal that's important to you. Or mini goal, or many goals. And again, maybe it's just seeing and feeling from the inside out that you are stronger, or more knowledgeable or more skillful, perhaps even than you imagined you were. And, you know, because in the mind all things are possible, you can invite other people into this image in your mind and you can imagine them being really happy for you or proud of you or perhaps even learning from you. Maybe your friends or your family or your children or your coworkers or somebody um, learns something from your example. And so the benefit of what you accomplish has this really beautiful ripple effect, like throwing a, a pebble in a still lake and just watching the ripples radiate out the benefits of what you do and what you learn being more lasting than perhaps you even imagined before. And as you look back from this perspective of higher understanding, you can see all along the way um, all of the steps that you took and how each step brought you even closer to your goal. And that even if you had minor missteps, that's perfectly normal and perfectly fine. You can just notice this and keep on going and resume your progress on this journey. But really allow yourself to step into the experience of success and joyfully accept it and embrace it just allow yourself to bask in the feeling of doing something that's meaningful to you. Being able to kind of check something off your list in a way. Or realize that you have yet another uh, tool or set of tools in the toolbox of your life. And you can actually do this exercise anytime you want to start or um, make more progress toward a goal. And again, because in the mind all things are possible, you don't have to listen to any you know, of the naysayers or the inner critic, or you don't have to come up with all of the reasons why something might not be possible because everything is possible. And each time you do this exercise, what you notice can become even more vivid and you can feel better and better and maybe you'll even be surprised to see how effective this can be. 
it's like you're rehearsing the success before it happens, but you're also tapping into the success. And that is part of what allows you to be even more confident and remain motivated and be kind of excited about the journey. Because so often we can feel like the journey is the end, is the end point, like everything else is kind of not as important. And yet each step is the journey. Each step is important. Each step is an achievement in and of itself. And what a wonderful thing it is to remember that. So again, you can step into this exercise anytime you want to feel uh, more connected to your goal. And if you have a journal, if you're open, open to keeping journals, um, I would actually write down anything that you noticed if you listen to this part of the podcast tonight and check in with yourself. Make note of your progress. You can even write a, a letter to yourself encouraging you. You can write a letter to yourself from that future you to the you in each moment, really. And it might sound a little bit corny, but it's actually much more effective than you might have imagined before now. And so what I'd like to do is kind of bring you back to um, the present moment a little bit more. And you can do that by um, bringing your awareness back to the room wherever you are and to the feeling of your body um, connected to the earth. So your feet on the floor or your um, body in a chair or on a couch or wherever you find yourself, you can um, stretch. I always think that's a great thing anyway. It's just such a great way of releasing tension and feeling good and feeling grounded. You can have a drink of water. Um, just kind of give yourself like 10-15 minutes to really anchor yourself in the present moment. But if you try either of these techniques or both, I really hope you let me know how it goes. Um, because I know that they can be helpful. I think you probably have a sense of that too. too. Um, but I would love for people to let me know or leave me a comment. Um, but just take some time and do something really nice for you. You honestly deserve it. And setting and achieving goals that mean something to you is really part of that. You're going to feel so great with the progress that you make. And if you like the podcast, I hope you will like and subscribe, follow, share. Um, I hope you also drop me a little comment and let me know how you're doing. Um, but I think you'll find that these techniques can be really helpful. Um, and I'm curious to see how you do. So until next time, I wish you all the very best and thanks for joining me.